In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. On the day of her baptism, Helen Cecilia was welcomed into the church, given new life in Christ, and clothed with the garment of salvation. Today, we greet the body of our sister Helen and surround her with the church's prayer. We commend her to the mercy of God and pray that the promise made to her in baptism will be fulfilled. We now invite the family to place the pall on Helen's casket. Church in Amherst, 
And of course, uh, Jack is famous for his short homilies. <laughs> Father Leo Byrne, and Leo is uh, to read, as well as uh, Helen and my Buzz. I think Kim was telling me that uh, Buzz and Helen were in grade one together. So it's a pretty long love story, isn't it? Think of that. And then, of course, another uh, read priest, Father John Brennan, he's also here at uh, Our Lady of Lourdes, and he's the dean for this area. Like, I wouldn't even be able to talk to you right now unless I got permission there. <laughs> <laughs> and over behind me, we have uh, Father Brian McNally, and uh, Brian, for years, was the chaplain of the two hospitals, and then he was able to uh, be a pastor for a while. He just retired a couple of years ago, and now he's the priest of any of the old priests need help, you call Brian. He comes and makes sure that you're going to be all right. <laughs> the taxes are paid and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I have Father Roger Neal from uh, Brandon Priest at St. Joseph's in Bell. He was in Smith Falls for years, Napanee for years, and has known the family for years. And Rod's a pretty good golfer, I'll tell you. We have our deacon. You drive. That's right, just said that. What's 500 bucks? Oh, of course. Yeah. 600 bucks on a new driver. <laughs> we'll have to see if it helps him at all. <laughs> then we have our deacon, Deacon Bill Gervais. Uh, Bill has been the deacon here for years and years and knows uh, Baz and Helen really well. And the altar boy, we had to go to the Alder Boy Hall of Fame to get this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Hadley, and he's the new nephew uh, for Buzz and Helen. Um, sort of appropriate we have the funeral here because way back when they had all the COVID rules, you would have, for a while, you would have 10 people in the church. That's when we had uh, Buzz's funeral. And then the bear, of course, right next door. And then uh, this is what Helen uh, wanted. And it was very appropriate that on, uh, on their anniversary date, that was when Buzz passed away. And then Sunday morning at 10.30, we had Mass here for Buzz because it was his birthday. And while the whole family was here and we were praying for Buzz, of course, all the family had their cell phones turned off. Uh, that was when Helen passed away. So I think and she would have been very happy knowing the family was together. They were together in church, praying for Buzz, so it was a perfect uh, send-off for her. So uh, on behalf of the two parishes, I welcome everybody here. Oh, I shouldn't mention the name, he's <laughs> <laughs> He's a nephew, and he's a pretty good golfer, too. Thank you, Father Tim. On behalf of the Hanley family, I want to thank you for your tremendous care for Buzz and Helen these last few years. Your pastoral care of them has been beyond what is needed or expected and so I know that we're very appreciative to you and uh, a special thanks to you. Please stand now as we bow our heads in prayer for our sister Helen. O God Almighty Father, our faith professes that your son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Helen Cecilia, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And I invite Gerard and Anne's daughter Mary to come forward for our first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance for our, of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, 
to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. The word of the Lord.
he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, the disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and are not all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to comfort those who mourn. With these words from the prophet Isaiah, Jesus began his public ministry. And in this and each Mass, we celebrate the good news that Jesus, applying these words of the prophet Isaiah to himself, has, through his own sacrificial death, united himself with us. In our sufferings, in our brokenheartedness, and in our grief, especially at this time, with the loss of a beloved mother, nana, sister, aunt, godmother, cousin, and dear friend to so many. For as St. Paul reminds us, this Easter story does not end in sadness and grief, but rather in Jesus' victory over death through the resurrection and the hope and promise of eternal life for all the baptized. St. Paul says it is Christ who died, or rather, who was raised, who is also at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Helen Cecilia Hanley knew this life of intercession and faith from an early age. Growing up as one of nine children on the McKinney family farm next door to the church at Reed. Farm life was marked with hard work, with seasons of plenty and times of want, with fair weather and stormy days, and the reality of the cycles of life and death just outside their door. But one constant in this life was a deep faith in Jesus Christ and the sacraments, and in the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph. And so we ask that the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph comfort and console us in our grief, especially extending sympathy to Anne, to Gerard and Anne, to Dan, to Laverne and Sandra, and Janine, her grandchildren Mary, James, Connor, Michaela, Julia, who's not able to be with us today, in Aust is in Austria, Kaylin, Larissa, and Joseph. Her surviving siblings, Anna, Jimmy, and Marina, Bernice, and Frank, Mary, and sisters-in-law, Mary McKinney, and Jean LeClaire, brothers-in-law, Jack Boyle, and Jim Hanley, her nephews and nieces and cousins, and all of the McKinney, Freeman, and Hanley family. As we all well know, Helen has suffered many ups and downs in her health over these last numbers of years. 
She and Boz seem to be a tag team. One getting sick, the other taking care of, the other getting better, the other getting sick. As, but as Buzz's own health declined prior to his death, as Father Shea said on their 59th wedding anniversary in April of last year. And even during these struggles, Helen kept going, trusting in God and his providential care for her and benefiting from the care of you, her children, who took one or two evenings a week to have dinner with her, to look in on her, and ensure that she was never too alone, even in her sadness at the death of Buzz. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril of the sword? No, in all of these, we are more than victorious through him who loves us. Yet three weeks ago, when I last visited Helen, it was as if she had turned a corner. She looked great, was energized. And I don't know if I could tell you this, but she was moving about the house without the rollator. <laughs> and I brought in a favorite lunch from Ramekins, and we had a great chat and a great visit. She remarked during that time that Buzz's headstone, tombstone, had been finished and that she was looking forward to August 28th with which she said providentially falls on a Sunday, you might know. And you know what day that is, and I nodded my head, of course. And I'm having a mass for Buzz here in the church and the family are going to come and we're going to pray at the grave and then we're going to have a little reception at the house. Little did we know that after a lifetime of praying to St. Joseph for a happy death, her wish would be granted at that time on that particular day, as Father Tim told us this morning. After such a close and loving relationship with Buzz, I like to think he called his bride home out of her loneliness and suffering on his birthday to rejoice with her in the eternal life promised to us all. I also have to give Buzz more credit than I thought he had in the heavenly kingdom. <laughs> and I admit, I'm a little more scared of him now <laughs> than I was this time last week. We thank you, Helen, for leaving behind a legacy of a rich life of faith lived out for family and others and we pray that through the offering of this funeral mass with so many priests present and through the mercy of god your sins may be forgiven and that you will be welcomed into the fullness of eternal life to be reunited with your sweetheart buzz your parents vince and charlotte your sister margaret and your brothers don lauren Leo and Vince. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. These words of the gospel came to mind as we thank God for instilling in Helen a life marked, as I said, by deep faith in the Lord and a generous spirit, especially to her family, to her friends, and those in need. Whether it be her devotion to Buzz and their date nights on Saturday evenings, which began a lifelong tradition of attending dances and card plays, and later so many wakes as the years went by or her love for her children, and especially her attentiveness to three dimensions of their raising, the spiritual, the disciplinary, and the social. The spiritual with attendance not only at Sunday Mass, but first Saturdays along with confession, and the generous use of holy water and St. Anne's oil as the situation demanded. 
Discipline was also given when needed. I can't imagine this at all. Usually with the aid of a wooden spoon. <laughs> Gerard recalls a time when he was already in his early 20s and he did something she did not like. She swatted him on the arm with a famous wooden spoon, only to see it break in two in her hand. <laughs> his only remark to her was, Mom, I'm either too old for this, or you need a bigger spoon. <laughs> this was the same woman who thought always of opportunities for her family, who even though she could not swim, made sure that the kids enjoyed a week at the rental cottage every year. You recall those days before they bought their place at Gananoque Lake? Not wanting to be left out of the action on the water, a floating lawn chair was rigged for her and tied to the dock so that she would not drift down the lake. <laughs> Having years before been given the nickname Yoda, <laughs> this seaworthy vessel was aptly christened Yoda's Yacht, <laughs> and much fun was had by all. For her devotion to you, her grandchildren, she talked of you to me all the time, not of the kids, forget about them. This one's there, this one's here, this one's there, with a special car arriving in time for each of your birthdays. James, your birthday today, your car has already been prepared, I understand. And with a special treat that was given only to grandchildren, the homemade peanut butter cookies that she made only for each of you. Her special concern as well for priests and nuns, yours truly included. Or finally, her love of music, her ability to play the piano by ear, which added much joy to her life, as befits her patron, St. Cecilia, the patroness of music. The book of Ecclesiastes reminds us, for everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted. I had to put an agricultural analogy in the homily somewhere. But let us thank the Lord for the seasons of life we had with this wonderful woman and for planting the seed of faith in our sister Helen Cecilia, a faith lived out both in word and action. We have loved her in life. Let us not forget her in death, as St. Ambrose reminds us, as we pray for her eternal rest in the beautiful words of St. John Henry Newman, O oh Lord, support us all the day long until the shades lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. And Lord, in your mercy, grant us safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last. I invite Kaylin, Larissa, Joseph, and Mary, all the grandchildren, to come forward now for our prayers of intercession. And I invite those bringing up the offertory gifts to prepare them as well. Madeline, Goslin, Norm, and Nikki Lane, Diane, and Mike. Oh. 
as we pray for Helen, for all those of us gathered to mourn and all our needs, our response this afternoon, hear us, Lord, in your kindness. Hear us, Lord, in your kindness. We pray for our spiritual and civic leaders, for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Archbishop Michael Mulhall, our priests and deacons, religious, and those who have journeyed with us in our Christian lives, especially for those who supported Nana in her walk of faith. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, in your kindness. Let us pray for peace in our world and in our families, for peace in our own hearts, and the grace to be peacemakers. For your blessing upon the McKenny and Hanley clans, extended family, and loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord, in your kindness. Let us pray for those who are unable to be with us today, for those who feel alone, those who are ill. Let us pray, all gathered here, that we may treasure and ponder in our hearts the gift of God that now was to all of us. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, the Lord, in your kindness. We pray for our dear Nana, who prayed for us, was there at every milestone in our lives, and sent a card. As we commit our Nana into the arms of our Heavenly Father today, we pray that she be rewarded with eternal rest and the joy of being reunited with Papa. We pray to the Lord. Hear us, the Lord, in your kindness. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer. For our departed brothers and sisters, cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Amen. 
salvation of your servant Helen, we beseech your mercy, that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Up, Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of God. The 
mystery of faith. Thou stands thy Christ that is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Linus, Saint Charles Borromeo, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, Advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Remember your servant, Helen whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially Basil Francis, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now pray for Helen in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of that peace.
sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Helen Cecilia may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Once again, on behalf of the family, I thank you for joining them this afternoon for Helen's funeral mass. We're going to proceed directly across the parking lot to bury Helen uh, in the cemetery here. And all who are able are most welcome to join us. Immediately following that, the family invites you to a reception in Helen's honor in the parish hall of Blessed Sacrament Parish, Amherst View. Uh, and for those who are out of town and don't know where to go, ask someone else. <laughs> Basically, it's two blocks south of the water tower. My friends, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Helen. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it also ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, will destroy even death itself. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Helen. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see her again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. In baptism, Helen shared in the death and resurrection of Christ. May Helen be welcomed into the glory of eternal life. As a sign of respect for our sister Helen, we sprinkle this holy water and we let this incense rise to God who has called her to share in his glory. and every gesture of friendship that you give to others be a sign of God's peace for you. In peace now, let us take our sister Helen to her place of rest. May the road rise up to meet you May the wind be always with you. May the sun shine long away till we meet again. 
Sunshine, won't you always till we meet again? 